Wolfgang Wodarg is our guest for at least the next 30 minutes, a very busy individual. We are honored to have him. This is a major newsmaking interview. He is the head of health at the Council of Europe. And we have the 47 nation body now investigating falsified swine flu pandemic, health ministers and officials being on the payroll worldwide in different countries to push the fear, the dangerous nature of the vaccine, all the deaths that were caused in the trials a few years ago of the bird flu. He's investigating it all. We salute him. They've been having their investigation the last few weeks. So here to break it down for us is Dr. Wolfgang uh, Wudarg. And, sir, we really appreciate you coming on with us today. Thank you that I can be with you today. Uh, again, tell us about, just basically about the Health Council of Europe, why you started your investigation, what your investigation is finding. Yes, I'm a physician myself, and I was director for many years of a public health institution in northern Germany, observing the flu waves coming every year. And as my region has about 120,000 inhabitants, I used to count about 10% of the population uh, getting ill with a flu and something or symptoms of a flu uh, almost every year. So when I observed this, what we heard last April about Mexico City, a region with 20 million people, I was very much astonished uh, that there were only 1,000 cases when somebody already spoke about pandemic. I didn't understand that because in my small town we had more disease, more people getting ill within one or two weeks from uh, from the influenza too when there was an influenza, and um, so I started investigating and I found out that uh, this was due to a change of definition. WHO had changed the definition what a pandemic is. Me as a public health uh, doctor, I learned that a, that a pandemic is something spreading very fast. But as the flu always spreads every year very fast or as fast as the planes fly, so uh, this was nothing new. And a pandemic, which is really worthwhile, an alarm or an alert reaction of the people of this world, this is a pandemic which has serious diseases, which goes along with very high mortality, with many deaths. And uh, so when I heard about the Mexican cases, I was curious why they did this, because it didn't give any sense. There was nothing extraordinary. There were mild cases. It was not even a new virus. This was obvious very soon because elder people didn't get ill. People older than 60 almost didn't get ill. And this is a very clear indication for that they have already been vaccinated with a similar virus or that they have been infected with a similar virus some years ago or many years ago. So... Um, this is, uh, so I didn't understand why this happened. And now you've had a chance to begin your investigation. When, when did the council start looking at this? Yeah, the council has decided in, in the middle of last of the December, on the, on the 11th of December, and last year there was a session in, um, on the Committee of, of uh, Social Affairs and Health in Paris, and we... Uh, had an anonymous uh, decision that we want an urgent uh, debate on the topic because we wanted to reinstall trust in the WHO because the many uh, the population in Europe is very much uh, yeah, astonished about this agency because they just uh, they advised us twice now or at least twice and they told us uh, there's be a big threat for health it was the bird flu where they said mm, thousands of people may be dead and uh, they said it now the same way with a with a swine flu so we we want to reinstall health in this uh, it, it, we want to reinstall trust in this uh, WHO and this is why we wanted an urgent debate and we are 47 countries and in this uh, parliamentary assembly of the council of europe we have all the parliamentarians we have the national parliamentarians from 47 countries we have the opposition parliamentarians we have the governing parties there so if you transport a topic to this uh, platform, you can be sure that there is a discussion 47 times in the different nations. Okay, doctor, doctor, not to interrupt, but we have to break. Uh, Dr. Wolfgang Wodarg is our guest. He's the head of the Health Council of Europe. We're going to break down what they found, and it's incredible, on the other side. Dr. Wolfgang Wodarg has been the head of health for the Council of Europe until late last month. Now he rotated off that post and is still an honorary member of it. Now he's a private citizen medical doctor who can now speak about this. They've been investigating it since last year. They've now started the formal investigation. 
uh, from a, a week and a half ago, and we have the quotes here from the resolution uh, about Big Pharma pushing this, uh, most of the White House here, the scientific experts on the payroll, uh, they talk about it being a dangerous vaccine, the German government wouldn't take it, wouldn't give it to the troops, uh, the, our media lied and said there wasn't mercury in it, uh, uh, and uh, of course it killed a fraction of those what the regular flu does, so, so that's what they're looking at. So. Uh, in that first segment, Doctor, we got up to the point of the formal investigation starting. What did you guys hear in testimony in the last few weeks? Uh, and then break down personally uh, some of the statements you've made, the research of what this appears to be. Yeah, the, we had uh, the WHO was present in the first edition, and there will be a report which will be finished in June, and there will be recommendations for our member governments. Uh, how to handle this problem in future, because we have seen that the, the governments had to order or ordered a lot of uh, vaccines and they were obliged. They made marketing commitments with pharmaceutical companies because they were threatened by specialists, by scientists, that there could be something very dangerous coming. And uh, so they just made those contracts. And within those contracts, which were secret, which we could not see as parliamentarians, uh, there was written that the WHO was at the trigger to say this is a pandemic and if they say it, then the whole business was on and they had to take the vaccines for pandemic use. And this was about $18 billion worldwide value and uh, this is a lot of money in health. So uh, we, we were wondering because of this mild flu how such, a, such an enormous waste of money could happen and how uh, millions of people could have been vaccinated parallelly to the seasonal vaccination, so it's a double vaccination, uh, without any uh, uh, scientific evidence to do so. And there, was, there is Poland, for instance, where the health minister, she's experienced in public health, as she said, no, we don't buy this vaccine, and the Polish now are very well off. They are not vaccinated, they didn't spend the money. And in other nations, the people didn't trust. The French, for instance, they bought for 90% of the population, they bought vaccines, and only 6% took the vaccine. It's similar in Germany, and nevertheless, people are well off. This was the mildest flu ever, and uh, the people were much clever, much more clever than the government. So we have to find out what was going on with WHO. Why did they do this pandemic alarm? And we found out that there is a public-private partnership within WHO, which developed the last 10 years, and which the very powerful pharmaceutical company, companies seem to have used quite well for them, for their purpose, for their shareholders, because they, uh, the, the decisions there were, were uh, the reason why they now earn so much money with this vaccine. And uh, we don't know what really happened. We only know that they changed the definition of pandemic, which was a very dangerous thing before, and now it's just a normal flu. It's called a pandemic, and this is the reason why the business for pharmaceutical companies was uh, open. Well, uh, doctor, looking at this, and again, we're talking to the former head. He, he, he just left his uh, post, a uh, regular rotation off of it, last month as the head of the Health uh, Council of Europe. I still, Specific I still go on cooperating with my colleague and working on this matter very intensively. So you're still part of it. Uh, the, the, my point is this. So out of the gates, and we noticed this, they changed the definition of a pandemic so because they knew that it was very mild and wasn't a pandemic by the old measurement, not even near. So out of the gates, we know that that is fraud. And uh, then in the reports I've been reading, uh, the council and yourself have been talking about uh, that the vaccine wasn't properly tested, was approved without testing, thanks to government's declarations of emergency. That's why they went with the pandemic designation, correct? It's true, because... Uh if, you, if, the, if the pharmaceutical companies wanted to have a real business, they, they have a monopole on the vaccines. And this is what they tried by using new vaccines, using adjuvants, using new technologies to, to breed the virus for the vaccine. And this were patented methods. So they could monopolize it and uh, tell the governments that uh, this was a pandemic vaccine, a special one, which they can produce uh, more uh, quickly than normally. And this is what they made the contract. And uh, so this is the trick, how the big pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, had this uh, marketing commitment. Uh, okay. Normally, normally Go ahead. Can, yeah, pardon? Go ahead. 
Yeah, normally you can, if you have the virus, which is to come, you make a mixture of certain viruses you expect to come. And there are so many facilities all over the world which would be able to produce non-patented vaccines everywhere, very fast and very much adapt to, to the uh, epidemiological situation. But when you do this with a monopole, when you have such a small passage only, and, and everything has to go through those few enterprises, uh, it is not uh, faster, it's not quicker. And I think it is just the wrong pandemic plans we do. We should have no patents on vaccines. This is what we think politically. The Council of Europe already had a decision on this. We said there should be no patents, no monopoles possible on life-saving vaccines. Because, doctor, doesn't that also incentivize the big pharma to engage in hype and hoaxes and fraud because it is a monetary driver? Yes, I think um, it, is, it is their trick that they always try to monopolize this, and we, are, we pay much more like this if we would pay the scientists to find out the best, uh, the best vaccines and to develop the best vaccines, and let this do without patents, and let them be copied all over the world very fast. Right. The, the taxpayer would be much better off, and it would be now, much cheaper. Now, Dr. Wolfgang uh, Wudarg, I want to move quickly because I know your time is precious here and you're very busy. I have so many questions, but a, a thought I, uh, that I just had when you mentioned the third world, they're already saying they're going to ship this throughout the year around the world when they admit that the virus is already mutated and is already e even weakening more. And in six months a year, it'll be absolutely worthless if it wasn't already worthless. And they're saying they're going to ship the unused vaccine because the hoax failed. The people didn't take it in mass to the third world. I mean, is that not manifest fraud on top of fraud right there? But there is no influence in the hot, in the hot countries and we, they don't need it. And there is no, no influence in the Arctic neither. The virus needs a certain climate to spread. And this is only in our regions in winter. And so we don't, the third world doesn't need it really. But I had a discussion yesterday with Japanese colleagues. And the Japanese, they are going to have the vaccination campaign in February. So they just will start now. And they know already that it is a very mild flu to come. And there is no danger in it. But the Japan bought vaccines for 110 million people. And they cannot uh, retire from this uh, vaccine contract. So they are in a very, very big political dilemma now. And they have very big problems because the Japanese people, they already know it wouldn't be necessary to get vaccinated. What shall Japan do with all its vaccines? But that's my next issue, is, is this is destroying the credibility of the entire medical system when it is big pharma that is doing it. Uh, in the Council of Europe report, uh, it is discussed that this is an untested uh, dangerous vaccine. Can you speak to that? Also, can you speak to the German military and government ministers being given a special additive-free vaccine? That isn't a very strong yeah. vote of confidence. Yeah, this is, the two, this is two points. The first thing is that the pandemic vaccine has, is a pandemic vaccine, and it was, it was uh, planned to be uh, produced very fast, trustly. And uh, so this is the, we have additives, adjuvants, and with it, and they are only tested with elderly people. This is why the, F the FDA in U.S. didn't allow this vaccine to be used with children and younger people in U.S. And so U.S. people population is well pro better protected against those uh, side effects. But in Europe, we just use them for children, for pregnant women, and there are no clinic. There's no clinical testing has been uh, done with with children, and with some of the vaccines. And there are other vaccines which you spoke about for soldiers. This is a vaccine which takes the whole virus, and it is known to have more side effects. So, so it's not better than the one uh, the, the rest of the population gets. It well, yes, sir. Doctor, we know what adjuvants did with the anthrax shot. The Pentagon suspended it because in young people, as you know, doctor, before the audience may not, when you give a young person who has a really strong immune system an adjuvant, it can trigger uh, what the cytokine storm and have the lungs fill full of uh, liquid similar to hemorrhagic fever, correct? Uh, this, I, don't, I don't have this, this scientific uh, evidence for this, but I know that uh, the adjuvants, they stimulate the immune system enormously. And this may lead to misfunction of the immune system, which means that there may be uh, autoimmune diseases or allergic diseases uh, result afterwards within those vaccinated people. So well, sure, what about all the confirmed cases of Guillain-Barre? Guillain-Barre was uh, there when they had this uh, vaccine, uh, some... Uh, 
it was in in uh, in US when they stopped having this, and this is the, the see, there is evidence for this. But uh, what they what they use now is a new patent at UNS, and we don't have any at, uh, we don't have any evidence uh, how the side effects of this will be. But this is a big risk, and it would not be necessary necessary to take this risk. I mean, sure, if the flu was killing tens of millions of people, it might be if you could trust the shot. But if it's a mild bottom line, doctor, you personally looking at the research, is this a giant hoax? Uh, was this, I mean, we know they paid off most of the big health ministers to come out and fear monger. Is that not a conflict of interest? It is, a, for sure, it is a conflict of interest. Those people who are there for their shareholders, who are in, had to have the interest of the pharmaceutical companies and to earn a lot of money, they have different reasons to decide, and they decide differently than those people who are in charge of public health and of safety. And the WHO is an institution, a public institution for public health, and it should not, its decision should not be influenced uh, by, the, by the interests of the industry. And this seems to be what happened. There is no other explanation for those decisions. Bottom line, it's a hoax. Yes. Unbelievable, uh, Dr. Wolfgang Wudarg is our guest. We're going to give you his website when we come back. I'm going to try to twist his arm into staying maybe to 40 after because we're going to have one five-minute segment when we come back. And I've got this huge list of questions. If it sounds like I'm interrupting you, doctor, it's just I, I mean, you are such a great person. This council is doing such great work exposing this fraud. It's wudarg.de is the website. We've got it up on screen at prisonplanet.tv for the viewers. Radio listeners can go to infowars.com and link over. We've got him till 40 after, graciously giving us a lot of time. He was the head of the investigation for the 47-member nation body, Council of Europe, Parliamentary Assembly over health, and they just had the start of the intense investigation i want to get into that in the next segment any new breaking info that came out what you were told by big pharma that you had before you but first doctor uh, you talk about the bird flu and i have the czech republic news i have uh the london telegraph uh where they were mixing weaponized i mean very deadly bird flu in thank god they found out it was killing the test animals we have homeless people die after bird flu vaccine trial in poland roughly thirty percent that were given it died the media never said what big pharma company that was you mentioned that that hoax as well can can you speak to that oh i'm not so much in this matter i only know that the enterprise of baxter sent uh, such uh, stuff to uh, sixteen labor laboratories in in europe and that in Czech Republic they found out that it is a very dangerous mixture which they send, and they, it is said that they send it by accident, but uh, the, the enterprise doesn't uh, declare anything. And as far as I know, there have been no parliamentary investigation. I think there should be a very deep and thorough investigation on this. What I know is there is some courts uh, dealing with this, so uh, we have to, to look at the single states. And I think the German parliament should, too, be engaged in this and have a look uh, what happened, really what happened, why it happened. It is a very dangerous thing. If those materials are handled, if those dangerous viruses are handled uh, by people who, who are not uh, very responsible and who are not very much bound to public interest and to public health, this is a dangerous thing. And uh, if an enterprise which goes for money has such stuff, I think it is not, uh, we should not allow this. I also saw a lot of top genetic engineers and scientists in the headlines, I would imagine you saw it, doctor, saying this was clearly a manufactured, that the, that the swine flu appeared to come out of nowhere in the wrong hemisphere, wrong time of year, and that it had a pedigree leading back to laboratories. It is a funny thing that it went like it went, and it, uh, it is an unusual event which happened. And um, the blow-up, which was made very soon after the whole thing started, uh, seems to be uh, an indication that there, was a, that there were people already waiting for something to happen to use this what happened uh, for their purposes. It looks like that, uh, but we have to find out what really happened, and we right. don't know it. Well, sir, you told me off air you were aware of InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I will send you today the secret Department of Cemetery document we got in January of 2009 and the clips of an emergency manager who we did not give his name, but we confirmed who he was. We, we interviewed him. Others interviewed him. 
I interviewed him off air. We had the reporter on who interviewed him with the newspaper.com. In January, three months before the hype in Mexico City began, they went all over the U.S. from California, Illinois, New York, and I got the Bureau of, uh, of Cemeteries and said, millions will die, prepare for martial law. Now, it, it appears that that was done also in, 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 in April, got secret documents, Department of Health in Texas, where they told them we're really at level six and that the government was scaring the locals covertly to create this fear. Uh, so clearly, sir, we know before it even popped up in Mexico that they were hyping this. I don't know whether your parliamentarians in your parliament, whether they are after, they should be after this too. Because when we have such, uh, when we have such uh, information in parliament, normally the opposition goes for it and the opposition tries to find out and the parliamentarians have the right to investigate everything. Every door has to open if a parliamentarian comes. And it has to be made obvious. We have to see all the files. This is how we work normally in uh, in many countries of Europe. In Germany, I did this many times, and uh, this should be done. And there uh, should be investigations. And uh, so I think this is a very, a very big and very severe suspicion uh, we must have. And uh, so we have to 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 be sure. Uh, well, sir, really going have. back to the hoax, which you're agreeing, clearly it's a hoax. What was the point of the hoax? And we also know, again, all these different government ministers in health, a lot of them are on the payroll of these companies. I know about some countries that they, they were list, uh, are lists now of, of scientists who advised the Minister of Health, and those uh, scientists are on the payroll of uh, several companies. I know this about, I have information about French, I have information about uh, Holland, I have information about um, the, the, in Britain. So, and my colleague, uh, he he will uh, from the from the Labour Party, a parliamentarian from Great Britain, who will continue to to do to to have this auditions done. He will invite them, and he will try to get uh, expertise and scientific evidence uh, what really happened. All right, got a break, Doctor. Final segment with our guest. We'll talk about what they discovered in their investigation. Okay, sir, tell us. Now that you've had official hearings on this, new information that you've discovered, you also told me during the break the connection between bird flu, swine flu, secret contracts, why that is so important. Yeah, we had a first audition, and uh, the WHO representative was there, and uh, we asked them um, which uh, reasons they had to change the definition of a pandemic. And he didn't give us uh, scientific reasons. He just told us that the WHO is asking many scientists. He told us the number of scientists, about 138 scientists, he said, they, they were asking. Uh, and after this, they had changed the definition. But when you really, when you really see the, the, the press uh, reports from that time, it's from the 19th of May, and we asked him this too, uh, then you can see that there were... Uh, many member states urging urging uh, the WHO not to use the new definition. And Mr. Fukuda, who is the rep representative of WHO, who was present in Strasbourg, he told us uh, he told those uh, member states of WHO and told them, yes, we will have a deep thought on it. But then they met again with pharmaceutical uh, industry, and they just went on blindly using this unwanted uh, pandemic definition, and this led to spending enormous amounts of money, and this led to unnecessary vaccinations of millions of people. So I think uh, this will be a, a very uh, very severe thing and very, acu very uh, accusations we have uh, against the WHO and about, against those pharmaceutical companies doing such an undue influence on the WHO decisions. Well, Dr. Woodard, we know that they paid off ministers. We know they falsified the pandemic. We know they didn't get proper testing of the vaccine. We know they're making billions of dollars off of this. We know that bird flu trials killed a bunch of people. I mean, is this not a very serious criminal operation uh, that we're investigating? I think we have to stop this uh, entering of the private uh, private firms, private pharmaceutical firms, to the public health institution. They should just been. Uh, they should just leave this institution. They should have no influence on the decisions of uh, the agency of the public health agency, which is so important for for uh, protecting us against health threats worldwide. 
and uh, this is this shall be one of our uh, our goals to to give advice to our governments to go to the World Health Assembly and to say W say that WHO has to change its rules and that there has to be more transparency. This will be the result, I think, of our uh, of our recommendations. This will be our recommendations to the gov to the member states. Well, we know that in the U.S. and Europe, especially the U.S., because I've really studied that area. Perhaps you can fill us in on Europe. I mean, these are very draconian powers, and they tried to have forced inoculations uh, in New York State and Massachusetts State. I saw some European Union member states tried to say everyone must take it. It's the law. Isn't this a human rights issue when the government uh, in, in, in league with Big Pharma says you must take this experimental shot? Yes, the, the Council of Europe is a human rights institution, and this is why we deal with the matter. Because the integrity of, health, of the body and, and, and the right to, uh, to health is a very important uh, fundamental right, which is touched, and it should not be touched by, uh, if, if a doctor just does something because he, because he wants to earn money, he is punished if he doesn't do it for the, for the health of, of his patient, but he does it only for his, his pocket. So if an institution or if a big institution does decisions uh, for money, and it's influenced by people who do it for money. This is a crime, too, and I think we have to go after it as a, as a human rights institution, uh, and we will do it. Well, sir, we appreciate you joining us here today. My final question is this. It's two-part. What is the process on the report? Any other breaking news that came out of the preliminary hearings? So what is the process? Any new information, breaking news you'd like to relate to the world here? Uh, and when will the final report come out? I think the first, the last question I can answer the first is that there is no pandemic vaccination necessary. We know this now. Rather, we are, we are very, very sure that uh, it is not necessary. So the people were right in France. The people were right in Germany not to have this pandemic vaccination. This is the first and most important thing. And uh, what will be the, the result of our investigations? Uh, we see that in many national parliaments we have special investigations uh, according to their institutes and their scientists now. So we have 47 nations, 47 parliaments will do investigations. And what we do in the Council of Europe, we have, will be the platform for exchange of experience and we will foster this discussion in the national parliaments and we try to feed them with information we get from WHO and from other institutions. We, have, uh, we are now collect all information. We are in this, far, in, the, in this period that we collect many, many information about single scientists, single institutes, where they get their money from. And all this is now collected and we, we get a better and better mosaic, a better picture of what had happened. And this will, be the, this will be the report then, and the recommendations will come out of it. Well, we know uh, laws have been broken, some crimes have been committed, conflict of interest. But if this clear picture is confirmed, uh, do you believe that there will be calls for indictments or criminal investigations? Or does yes, Big Pharma have too much control? There is no law for WHO. There is no one who punishes those people in WHO. We only have national law. So this is very important that we have collect the information. And on the national level, we try to find those people responsible and we try to punish them there if they, are, if they did, did something wrong. Because and if this, we don't, they're just going to keep doing this over and over again. Again, yes, if you, if this is a bit, but this is the task of the government because the governments, they define the role of the WHO. It's a contract between the UN nations and the UN nations as, and the governments of those nations, they control the work of WHO, but it's the government, it's not the public. Will, will no, you be able to ever get those secret contracts? Uh, we got it in Germany, the French got it, and the national parliaments are now working to get all the contracts. The Japanese uh, told me that they had no possibility to retire from their contract, as we in Germany uh, succeeded to do a little bit. So we negotiated with the pharmaceutical companies, and they let us uh, save a little bit of money from, from those almost 700 million euros they wanted first. So uh, it's very, very different from nation to nation, and... I just can tell my colleagues and just can ask my colleagues in all parliaments, go ahead, have investigations, have a deep look. We cannot uh, t 
to tolerate such a development. We cannot have this the next winter again. We don't want such faked pandemics. But the good news is the court of public opinion, I've seen the numbers. This is record numbers of people not buying the hype who are refusing to take the shots. And in the final equation, we're going to let you go, doctor. Uh, who, who are the real bad guys? Big Pharma? And, and are you saying the who is run by Big Pharma? The who has opened the door for Big Pharma. And the Big Pharma influences the who by scientists with institutes paid by Big Pharma. Scientists are dependent that the institutes get money from Big Pharma, and the scientists go there. They do the clinical studies for Big Pharma on one hand. On the other hand, they go to WHO and say, you have to buy those pills, do, do such decisions. This is what the sp suspicion is, and this cannot be tolerated. But the public health institutions have to be free from influence, from economic influence. We, it's about our health. It's not about business. Yeah. Well, that's like Rick Perry, our governor, saying all girls must take the Gardasil shot that they admits killed a bunch of people. And then that wasn't even a law. He just recommended it, but went on TV and said it was the law. Hoax after hoax, and it turned out most of his party got massive money from Merck. Uh, Dr. Wolfgang Wodarg, we appreciate uh, uh, Dr. Wodarg for joining us. Wodarg. Uh, dot de is the website w o d a r g we appreciate you and your colleagues unanimous investigation uh, unanimously agreeing this is a hoax and a fraud and, 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 and expanding the investigation we salute your courage sir and we'll continue to watch uh, the investigation uh, and the report thank you very much for your interest take care sir we're very very interested thank you there goes dr uh, wodard now a n notice that they tried to make it mandatory in France and then in states in the U.S., and this whole thing fell apart because we exposed it, because we found out in January early on that they were planning a flu hoax hype. We didn't know if it would be real. We didn't know it would be super deadly. We didn't know if there would be martial law. We just knew they were hardening all police facilities for martial law in the name of pandemic megadeth flu. Millions dead in Illinois, millions dead in New York State. I mean, these are the documents we got. These are the eyewitnesses. And I went on air in January, in February, in March, and said, look for flu. And then when it popped up in Mexico and they hyped it up, we said, we don't know what's happening, but we know they're staging it. Look out. And we, our websites got hacked. We got attacked. Uh, and then I really got concerned because these were government-level attacks. And I was like, my God. This is real. But the good news is we exposed the hoax together, you the listeners of this show and others, and we came through this together. And uh, now they are damaged to where it will be hard for them. But Obama signed an executive order for total police state control during a biological attack.